Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to work on the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. Yes, I'm sorry, but I have to do that every time. Do you understand? Okay. We are, on, we are at page number 159. Please turn to page 159. Today is our day number 65. And let's see what the problem says. Page 159. Read it to yourself. Oh, we're, given a char we're, give we're given a table and we're simply asked to find what is the mean of the distribution. We have to find the average. We have to find the average of the distribution. This is something that we did a little while ago uh, in my previous video. Uh, if you have not watched it, I do not know what I'm going to actually call it, but anyway, this is the, it's right there. there. There are four types of questions in the exam on the new GRE, the revised GRE. There are four types of questions. One is the classical multiple choice question in the classical sense of the word, where there is only one right answer. Then we have the quantitative comparison questions. These two types exist in the old GRE also. The two new, the two new type of questions that they have introduced in the so-called revised GRE is this one, the numeric entry, where you have, where you're given an open-ended question and you have to enter the answer as you're instructed. If the problem says enter it to the nearest, it says give your answer to the nearest point zero 0.01, it says right there. Read the, read the thing, read the, open the, turn to the page 159 and read the instructions right above the box. It says give your answer to the nearest point zero 0.01, instead of saying to the nearest 100, I don't know why the hell they have to say you know, point zero 0.01. So we must answer the way the, the, they want to answer to be presented. And the third type of question is where they give you a question with a whole bunch of answer choices and more than one answer choice is maybe correct. And your job is to tick mark, check mark every one of them and, and so forth. Anyway, let's do the problem. I spent six minutes last time. I don't want to spend the six, six other minutes explaining the same bloody thing. So, the frequency, the frequency distribution of y is given to us. The question simply is, what is the mean? What is the mean to the nearest one hundred? Now here they say to the nearest point zero 0.01, nearest point zero 0.01, this is very childish, I don't know why they say it like that. So here's our distribution, here's our y. We are told that half appears we are told that half appears two times, we are told that three quarter appears seven times, we are told that five fourth appears eight times, we are told that three halves appears eight times, and seven fourth appears nine times. We are going to do it quickly here, because this is, okay, so let's do it right here then. So basically, we just take our observation and multiply by how many times it appeared. So two times we have, we have two times half, then we have seven times quarters, then we have eight times five fourth, then we have eight times three halves. I'm going to erase the thing, I need the room. Eight times three halves. And then we have 9 times 7 fourth. Make sure I, I did not uh, made a, make a boo boo before I go bonkers with it. Well, let's get going. Enough of this. I see a fourth here, I see a fourth here, I see a fourth here. Let's convert everything into, into 
Well, what do we want to do here? Convert everything to fourth, which is a very babyish way of doing it. I don't like to do things in a baby way. Let's do it in a little bit more sophisticated way. This is actually very straightforward. Two halves is just one, so that's just one. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Listen. I don't want to do it in a classical way because everybody can do it in a classical way. You can do it yourself with a calculator. Try to be more creative, would you please? Here's what we're going to do. Pay attention. This is a 7, isn't it? This is a 7. I'm going to pretend it is an 8. So instead of 7, instead of 7 3 quarters, I'm pretending that we have 8 3 quarters, which means I'm pretending that we have one more 3 quarter than we actually do. So I need to subtract 1 quarter. 1 3 quarter. We'll deal with that. Let's, let's keep that in abeyance. Let's keep this. Let's keep this 1 3 quarter. Let's keep it in. And if you do not know what that means, the word that I just used in the context, I do believe that we learned it. If I can look at my dictionary list here. Okay. Day number nine. Just type in vocabulary, just type in vocabulary day nine with my name, Kashwani, and then vocabulary day nine, and you will learn this word abeyance. Good word to know for the GRE. It just means to keep it aside. To keep, we'll deal with it later. That's what it means. Let's keep it in abeyance. I will deal with it later. Where did this three quarter come from? This negative three quarter? Oh, because we, we have we are given seven. We are given seven of them, but I'm pretending that there are eight of them because eight goes easily into four. That's all. I'm pretending there are eight of them. They think there are seven of them. So I need to take away one. That's what it is. I, I need to take away one three quarters. That's what I did. So that makes our life simple. So four goes into eight two times. This marker is no good. 4 goes into 8 2 times. So that's the 6. This one is very easy. 4 goes into 8 2 times. So that's a, that's a 10. 8 goes into 8 goes into 2 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. So that's very simple. So far so good. Ah, there's another annoying one. Here, listen carefully again, one more time. Here we have 9 7 fourths. We have 9 7 fourths. I'm going to pretend that we have 8. We have 9 actually. So I need to add one more 7 fourths to deal with later. We're going to keep it in abeyance. Seven fourths. We'll deal with that later, okay? Well, let's keep it in abeyance, as I said. So that makes it easy. 8 goes into 4 2 times. So it's 2 times 7 is 14. And now we'll do our adjustment. This is what we call the adjustment. The adjustment was, we need to take away, we need to take away 1 3 quarter, because here there were 7, but we pretend there were 8, so we need to take away 1. And here there were 9 7 quarters. But we pretend that there are only 8, so we need to add a 7 quarter. Well, that's very simple. This is a negative 3, this is a positive 7, so that's just 4 over 4. So all I have to do at the end is to adjust 1. This one, this one that you see there, comes from this guy right here. That's all. That's our adjustment. Okay, that's our adjustment. Don't, don't confuse the two here. Let me put a demarcation here. Very good. So that was the adjustment of 1. All we have to do is now just add them up. All we have to do is just add them up. So let's do that then. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 10 is 17. 17 plus, uh, 17 plus 1 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. 30 plus 10 is 40. 40 plus 4 is 44. I'm going to do it one more time slowly. Okay, watch where I'm pointing things so that you can understand the logic. But if you're going to do this thing, you cannot break your concentration. There we go. One plus, because I'm going all over the place. I'm just going wherever it's easy for me. Okay? One plus six is seven. Seven plus ten is seventeen. Seventeen plus one, because I don't want to deal with seventeen plus twelve. That's annoying. One plus six is seven. Seven plus ten is seventeen. Seventeen plus one is eighteen. Eighteen plus two is twenty. Twenty plus ten is thirty. Thirty plus ten is forty. Forty plus four is forty-four. Forty-four. Voila. 
we just have we have our total now. All we have to figure out is how many there are, how many observations were there. So for that I need room. So figure out where it is, or we can do you can do it on your own. It's in front of you there. Let's do it very quickly here. How many are there? Looks like we had we had two plus seven plus eight plus eight plus nine. Again, we're going to do it together. Okay, see if you can follow my logic. See if you can follow my logic. I'm going to pretend that this 7 is 8. Why? Because this is a 9. If I can make this 9 into an 8 and give that one to this guy, I got 4 8's. I know 4 8's are 32. 32 plus 2 is 34. Now all we have to do is divide the two things. So divide the 44 by 34 and we're done. That's it. So we're going to do it. And 44 over 34 is simply 1 and 10 over 34. We're almost there. Let's divide 10 by 10 by 34 and we are, we are done. 10 divided by 34. Well, we put a decimal point and it becomes 100. Understand? Listen, okay? We know that 33 times 3 is 99. Keep listening. Therefore, 34 times 3 would have to be more than 100. It will be 3 more. If you add 3 more, This will represent 34 times 3, or 3 times 34. We only have 100. What does it tell us? It tells us that we cannot go 3 times, we can go only 2 times, but because the bloody thing is so close to 102, because the bloody thing is so close to 102, it's going to be 2.9. And since that's what they're looking for, they're looking for 2 digits, that's our answer. I didn't mean to say, I, I say 2.9, I meant to say 0.29 and here is our one that's it 1.29 is our final answer that's it we are done if you wanted to if you were hell bent on it you could continue okay I'm going to continue here if you wanted to and if you wanted if you wanted me to do the division properly I'm going to do it properly now which is 10 divided by 34 put a decimal and bring a and it's going to go 2 times. I know 35 times 2 is 70, so this must be 68. 2, 9 minus 6 is 3. Add one more thing. And again, it's going to go 9 times because 34 times 10 is 340. This is 320, it's 9 times. 9 4, 9 4 is 36. Carry 9 for the 36. Carry 3, 27 plus 3 is 30. We're left with 14. Okay, watch what happens. Half of 34, half of 34 is 17. This is not 17. So if you were to go one more time, whatever that falls here is going to be less than less than 5. It's going to be less than 5. And because it's going to be less than 5, we don't have to round up. Of course we don't have to round up because otherwise it will be 0.3, which I explained to you already. It's not going to be 0.3. Because 34 times 3 is 102, we only have 100. So we are clo very close to 0.29 and that's about it. The rest is going to be less than, it's going to, less than, it's going to be less than 5 something. That's our answer, 1.29. That's it, we're done. I think I, I should stop and I should stop because otherwise if I keep on going, I never end and I keep on explaining too much. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.